so I want to tell you a little story. There's a guy named M. Bundy. He was in prison for 700 days without being convicted. He was tortured in a solitary confinement cell for 13 hours in his underwear. His shoulder began to dislocate. But he was never convicted. Matter of fact, in Oregon, by a jury of his peers, he was found <laughs> not, not, not guilty. Not, not guilty. <laughs> but was that reported? Part of my mission has been to be the guardian and the keeper of my husband's good name. That has been very important to me. Because he was a man of great courage and enormous integrity. I never had to question him not one minute. If he said something, it was so. And I'm proud of him. I'm so enormously proud of him. And then he's murdered with three bullets to the back by Oregon State Police Officer Number One and Number Two. You know, I, I read an article last night that was rather negative about this event. It was horrible. And Mark really covered it well. <laughs> All of the irresponsible things that they were saying in that article, one that is an outright lie, and I'm not afraid to say that it is an outright lie, was, quote, that he threatened federal agents at gunpoint. Lie. lie. I remember those words that my husband gave me before I left to have faith, to take courage that God is in charge in all things. And I'm grateful for that. I decided after reading some of the news this morning that I wanted to just talk to the journalists here for a minute, because I'm a journalist too, and I know some of them stepped out, the guy from The Guardian, and so I can say this because he's not here. For those of you who don't know, The Guardian is like the CNN of the UK, right? It's like <laughs> ridiculous. Um, but, you know, as a fellow journalist who was educated in one of the best journalism schools in the country, I just want to talk to the journalists for a minute. You know, the polls show that less than one-third of Americans have any credibility left in what you said. You guys, nobody believed you, okay? Less than 15% of Americans believe you. Why do you think that is? You come here and you call people here, these good, wonderful, God-fearing patriots, you call them far-right and extremists. Well, you know, if your political views are somewhere between Stalin and Hitler of the National Socialist Party, yeah, moderate, God-fearing, patriotic Americans might look far right. But to the rest of America, these are just normal folks trying to live their lives and raise their families. So I got more bad news for you. <laughs> yeah, our family's been in the gallop about 150 years. We still run the original ranch. With Citizens for Balanced Use, we advocate for multi-use recreation, responsible resource development, and active forest management of our public lands. Under the Organic Act, and this is very important, national forests were reserved for two purposes, to maintain favorable conditions for water and to ensure a continuous supply of timber. That is the reason the forests were put in reserve in 1905 and 1906. I'm not here on my own. There are plenty of friends, plenty of other people back in the UK that support your president. That support this nation. If this country goes, then it's over. Period. Uh, we are in a position where we need to wake up and realize we are the last best hope for the world. We are in. I had to double check the uh, title of the conference here after I read the newspapers. I mean, my goodness, it couldn't be exactly opposite. I love government. I absolutely love government. I do. When it stays within the boundaries of the Constitution of the United States of America. Amen. Can we agree on that? I love government when it's responsible. For example, when, oh, I don't know, a jury of your peers acquits you of all charges in Oregon. Or maybe when a whistleblower decides to blow the whistle on corruption inside the BLM and, again, the case is dismissed in Nevada. That's what government should look like when it is working properly and responsive. What's interesting to me is that there are people that think that's a bad thing. 
Where are we in the United States today if that's a bad thing? So I'm here to talk to you today about the water rights adjudication that's going on in Idaho. And we've heard a lot today about the interfaces with the federal government. And I have to be honest, I go to a lot of conferences. And uh, a conference, you think it's something scandalous from what you've been reading in the paper. We're having a conference. What is a conference? I, I read the definition online. A formal meeting. Wow. How scandalous. And we're holding it in a conference center. A place where conferences are held. The federal Indian policy is what I've always thought of as the best kept secret. It's a federal Indian policy are decisions made by the federal elected officials that represent us and state elected officials that represent us that are then implemented by federal agencies. And those are decisions and conversations between federal and state governments and tribal governments uh, in which the general public is not only not invited but uninformed. And the same is true for most tribal families and tribal members. They're not invited on it and they remain uninformed as much as we are. So this is a great big hippopotamus sitting on the United States. I want to switch the conversation now to federal government overreach. First of all, let me state that I'm pro-government and pro-American Indian. I am also not suicidal. So here's my story. In 2005 and 2008, I was raided by a heavily armed SWAT team from the Bureau of Land Management. 24 armed agents stormed my museum for 11 hours. They took down my museum interns with M16s in the back of their head, spread eagle on the floor. They threatened me that they were gonna seize my property, I would have to forfeit my real estate, my collection, I would never see my special needs son again. So basically we have the US Constitution lists the jurisdiction, jurisdictional powers that, uh, that the federal government has, or the general government, or the US government. So you have two, you have two jurisdictions, and both jurisdictions are controlled by the people's constitutions. The state constitution controls the state government and gives them jurisdiction. The US Constitution controls the federal government and gives them jurisdiction. And those boundaries, those jurisdiction or constitutional jurisdiction protect you and protect me. They're designed to protect us, to keep our governments from stepping over the boundaries of what we placed upon them. I want them to do what they're supposed to do in the Constitution, protect my right to life, liberty, and my pursuit of happiness, and yours. It's my backyard, it's our backyard, it's our country. It's time for the federal government to literally start looking at the Constitution. <laughs> Sea to shine. 